Hi everyone, I'm Donna Louise and welcome to my YouTube channel for the love of puzzles. Today I have another compilation video for you of various speed puzzling runs I've done. But it's a little bit different because I did these two here, which you see fully assembled on the table, as a pairs with Wendy. Now, if you haven't seen Wendy on my channel, she's a friend, we puzzle together. She's becoming more of a puzzler, so she's puzzling more often, but she's by no means a speed puzzler. I think her fastest time for a 500 piece so far has been two hours and 15 minutes. And she's trying to like sit down and do one puzzle all in one go. She's really been improving and she actually really enjoys it. But because I'll be going to the worlds in Spain and I'll be partnering with Jeanette from Jeanette and Her Puzzles, I thought I should practice speed puzzling with someone. And luckily, oh, I was so appreciative. She did these two with me on the same day, back to back. And we learned so much from that experience. During the time lapse, I'll talk about what we did and then what we changed and what we talked about. And it, it was really good. I'm really appreciative of her doing that with me. It, it was a lot. So the two puzzles in question, the first one, both Robinsberger 500 pieces. During the qualifying rounds at Worlds, I believe it's a 500 piece Robinsberger. And then in the finals for pairs, it's a 1000 piece Robinsberger. So this one's called Cats on the Shelf. It's by Adrian Chesterman is the artist. He's the artist that did that big Educa 42,000 piece jigsaw puzzle I'm working on. And then this one, <laughs> some of you know, you know, you know what that expression means. This one is called what? Dandelions at Sunset and it's from Stefan Hefele. And I know that artist or the photographer, I've seen his name or I should say their name on other jigsaw puzzles that I've done. But this is from the Nature Edition. Ooh, that, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that puzzle. Let's just hide it for now. No, I'm just teasing. But so I sped run these two with pairs as Wendy. You can see I still have them completed on the table right in front of me. Then I also sped run this one on my own. This one's called Knitter's Delight. And the artist is Greg Cuddeford. Again, another one that whose name I recognize from other jigsaw puzzles, Robinsberger 500 piece. And I tried to do the shuffles, shuffle as I build method on this one. You know, I'm very curious because it looks like it's a photograph, but it looks like the cats are maybe photoshopped in. So it feels photography and part illustration. It, it's a bit confusing <laughs> for me. I like a clear idea of what to expect, but this was quite interesting. And then I'm going to talk to you at the end what I did with this 300 piece Robin's Burger, large size pieces. This was a little bit of an experiment. I didn't videotape anything. I'll just chat about it at the end after you watch the time lapse of these three other jigsaw puzzles. Now, one thing I have to say is a big thank you to everyone. I put up some posts on various social media outlets saying from my last speed puzzling video, how can I get faster? Any recommendations, any comments? And everyone's been so like encouraging. And Yvonne, I'll put up a link to her Instagram down below as well and her Instagram name. She speed puzzles, she's in the US. She's part of, I believe they're called the Golden State Puzzlers. She puzzles along with Tammy, um, as well as does she puzzle with Sarah Does Puzzles, so many people. I can't wait to meet them all at Worlds. And one piece of advice she gave me, which we used in all three of these videos and was very helpful, is to prop the box lid up in a position so you can like lift up your eyes and have a look at the image without trying to grab the box too much. Now, especially for pairs and teams, I can't hog the box. You know I love the image, but I can't hog the box. So that's one thing we did. And then for individual on this jigsaw puzzle, I propped up the box and I tried not to grab the box and bring it too close to me. Now, of course, during pairs or teams, you can always say, let me look at the box for a minute, but you can't hog the box and you don't want the box in your way. And often I hold the box lid and that takes up a hand. So it's not very convenient, not smart. So that was one big change that I made in these videos is propping up the box where we can easily see the image, use it to our advantage and not let the box hinder us because we are limited on space on the table as well. 
So I want to say thank you to Yvonne, as well as to everyone that provided words of encouragement and support and advice. I read it all. I appreciate it all. Thank you, thank you, thank you. But for now, and without further ado, let's get into watching us pairs, Wendy and I, speed run these two jigsaw puzzles. And then as an individual, I sped run this one. And then we'll come back and have a further chat. So the first thing Wendy and I did, we kind of talked a bit and made a plan because we've never like sped run as pairs a jigsaw puzzle before. So this is where we're chatting a plan of what we would do. I apologize. We were like, yep, we're going to prop up the box and get it out of the way. And we put it right kind of blocking the view of the camera. So the next video where we speed run the second jigsaw puzzle, it's much better. It's not in the way. So apologies for that. But we did prop up the box and you will see that we refer to it, but we don't grab it or move it and it doesn't get in our way. We just decided we would fully sort all the pieces and as soon as possible, start building the little sections. I probably sorted less than Wendy. I tried to start building as much as I could. Now, we made a big flaw here, which we realized also, and then corrected it for the second video. I am puzzling upside down, which I don't do, and very much confused me. And for the longest time, I had, um, like, parts of the jigsaw puzzle in the wrong place and it didn't connect and it was very confusing. We should have turned the puzzle sideways so we're each looking at it, you know, from the side but sh not upside down like I was doing. So it's right side up for Wendy, upside down for me, and I was confused for a lot of it. Now what I tried to do is if I was working on an area and you see Wendy is closer to the, the bottom of the jigsaw puzzle. If I had a bunch of pieces, at one point I knew they went to like the brown vase that's down there. I handed her a group and I said, Wendy, this is the brown vase down by you. I only handed her pieces if it was easier reach for her or something that she was working on. Like she did those red flowers down there. I would not just randomly hand her pieces and go, where do you think this goes? And because we sorted, we made it clear to each other which pile was for which items. So we went pile from pile working, and if we found pieces that didn't work in our pile, we put them in the correct pile, or we put them in our unknown pile. And that uh, near the timer there, that's all the cat pieces. And she did really well at trying to keep all the pieces face up. And even the cat pile, like we had all the eyes together, the light fur, the dark fur. And I was so impressed. We did quite well with this jigsaw puzzle. I felt I struggled at the start because it was upside down and I was confused. So until the image started to come together, I was a little bit lost. And Wendy pointed out to me that I get hung up on a piece, that I go, this, I should know where this piece goes. Where does this piece go? And she's taught me to recognize when I do that and to stop and put the piece down in the unknown pile. And I'm so pleased that the cat fur wasn't that bad. And you can see us talking about it. Now, Wendy accidentally kept pushing the table. You can see we turned the jigsaw puzzle to on its side. And look, just over an hour. I'm so very pleased of that time. So excited. I thought we did great for our first try. This was our first try. So now you can see we have a different setup. The timer is closer to the camera. The picture is away. It's not in the way. And look, we've moved the box for the sorting. Wendy is fully sorting and I've already started to build. I felt if I could start building, I'll do it. And then if there weren't enough pieces for me to build, I went and sorted more. This puzzle image was so difficult. It was so tricky. My goodness, what did we get ourselves into? And we did this right after the, the Cats on the Shelf one. We started in the sky area, actually wasn't that bad. We did really, really well. But you can see that huge pile down there, that's all grass next to Wendy. And that lower section, there's the dandelion heads, that wasn't too bad. There is a bit of like hills in the distance, that wasn't terrible. But when we got down to that lower half of the jigsaw puzzle, Oh my goodness, it was a grind, it was difficult, it was tiring, it was discouraging. And this is where Wendy said, we should do the hard parts first, so when we're discouraged, we go and work on the easier parts. I don't know, like I always leave the harder parts till the end, and someone once told me, build the easier parts first so you have something to work on. 
So I'm not sure what the best method is, but obviously, I mean, this was our second puzzle. We were tired and it was discouraging because it felt like we weren't getting anywhere. One thing, I tried to sit down more and not stand as much. I definitely did not grab the box. I referred to it though, but while it was propped up, um, Wendy kept accidentally kind of pushing the table. And I know at a competition, you can't like really mess with the table and bother the other people you're sharing the table with. But you gotta understand this is in my garage and we have like garage carpet and it's actually quite slippery. So it was very easy to just move the table slightly. And now we're getting down to the point where we pretty much almost have all the dandelions done and it's just that dark grass. And we're quickly approaching the hour and eight minutes we did for the cats on the shelf. And that's it. And the rest of this time is just grass, grass, grass. Has anyone done this jigsaw puzzle? So tricky, so difficult, but it was nice having someone to work with. And we worked really well together because I'd be like, oh, I think it's a two prong piece or a three prong piece. And we'd try. Eventually you're going to see um, Wendy even had trouble with the border. And she was like, okay, I'll start doing something else. But she does end up sorting the pieces by shape, which was very helpful. Cause at some point you just, you just have to do that. You know, here we're at the hour eight minute mark. So that's when we finish the cat on a shelf puzzle. And then we're just there. She's sorting by piece shape and trying to put them in the direction they would work. And the rest of this time is literally piece after piece. We tried not to get in each other's way, not to reach too far over, not to get our heads in each other's um, shadow. Um, what was interesting is Wendy, when she felt flustered, she talked to herself and just said, breathe. And I knew that's what she needed to do to calm down. She's like, okay, breathe. And then she'd keep going. And she actually told me that I can talk to myself in a bit muddle, mutter too, like just kind of chit chat with myself. And she knew to ignore it. So I'm gonna try not to be too chatty and distract my partner, but I'd be like, ooh, ooh got a piece. Oh, okay, what type of piece I need there? And it's mostly just talking to myself. But here we are getting close to the end and guess what? We had a piece missing. At one point, Wendy knocks some pieces. She eventually finds it and uh, we just knocked it. And there it's done. But my goodness, an hour, 34 minutes, we would not have finished this in the qualifying time of 90 minutes like that they have at Worlds. We would have been close, but that was a difficult puzzle. So here I'm trying the Knitter's Delight doing the shuffle method. Basically, I left all the pieces in the box I decided, and I propped up the box, I did move it closer there, but I did not grab and hold the box or bring it right close to me. And I decided what areas of the image to work on. I was concentrating like on the, the picnic kind of material, picnic black hit material, the gingham, is that what it's called? And the basket and the colorful yarns. And I'd pick out those pieces that stood out to me and I would try to build as much as I could as I picked out specific pieces. As I found the border pieces, that's what I'm piling um, in the corner there. And I specifically piled up like the bottom um, edge pieces that are along the floor and then the dark upper pieces. And then you'll see I have a lot of the blues because there's like a blue ball of yarn. And I did try to build as much as I could, but of course, because I didn't fully sort, I don't have all the pieces out, so I had to wait. But I did concentrate on quite a few areas, trying to basically shuffle. What I did is I didn't really shuffle the box. I more like shuffled my hand over the pieces to mix them up so they would flip up and new ones would be revealed to me. It felt a little slow to start, but that's similar to my um, build as I sort method. It always feels a little slow to start and then it just keeps coming together. And so what I noticed is I would pick out a few pieces that I'm like, oh, I think I know where this goes, this goes, this goes, grab a few from the box, then put them together. And look, I am using two hands. I'm mostly using two hands where normally I think I didn't use as my two hands as much. I felt I was doing pretty okay. It felt a little slow to start. And then here at this point where I'm picking out pieces, I'm flipping up pieces and I'm leaving dark pieces in the box and I'm literally filling in the gaps and I'm taking out the cat fur pieces and putting them to the side. I feel I'm getting better with animal fur to tell you the truth because that cats on the shelf puzzle, Wendy and I, 
we did quite well with the cats at the end. We concentrated on the eyes and the nose and the mouth, but there was also like various shading of cat fur. It went light to dark. There was maybe the two cats at the bottom, which were tricky, but I did not find these cats in this puzzle to be too difficult. I also told myself, calm down, it's okay. And I was really trying to look at the prong pieces. Okay, I need a piece with a wonky prong or a fat prong or a skinny prong. Now, if you saw, it was about the one hour, one minute when I just had the top border and these dark pieces left. And the rest of this time is struggling and fighting and arguing with these last dark pieces. I eventually had to sort by piece shape too. Oh my, and this is where, again, like Wendy said, you leave the hard stuff to the end and you get discouraged and you're tired. Ah, oh, should I have done this beforehand? So an hour, 16 minutes, still, a, you know, on average, comparable time for me, but what do you think? Was that a good method to do? I learned so much doing the pairs with Wendy. It was so very helpful. And to tell you the truth, I'm, I'm so proud of us. We did so well with the cats on the shelf, but my goodness, this, this nature's edition. What do you think? Is it best to start with the easier parts of the jigsaw puzzle and leave the harder parts till the end? It, if you can kind of guess what you think will be easier and harder, or is it better to do the harder parts first and then move to the easier parts when you're starting to get discouraged and maybe go back and forth or try to knock out those hard parts to begin with. So then you're just left with the easy stuff at the end. I mean, I don't know, like it is a slug and a grind when you're nearing the end of the puzzle and it's all, you've left all the, the sky pieces, all the water pieces, all the grass pieces, all the dark pieces. I do it. I do it all the time. I did it with this one. I left those dark pieces to the end. And how long did it take me just to do those last few dark pieces? It, it does get discouraging. Would it have been better for me to do those first? I don't know. I don't think so. I don't know. I'd like to hear your input about that though. What do you think? But Wendy was so great. It was so much fun. We're going to try to do some more to practice pairs. I don't know if I'll be able to find enough people to practice teams, but I think if I continue doing individual and do pairs with Wendy, we're getting there. But yeah, again, thank you so much to Wendy for putting up with me and doing two back-to-back -back 500 piece jigsaw puzzle speed runs. I really appreciate it. But there you go. Did I really do the shuffle as I build method? I think, kinda, you know, as best as I could. Shuffle as I build, sort out some pieces, left some pieces in the box. I'm not sure how I feel about it though. Was it better, worse? I just feel like on average, my time is like an hour, 15 minutes, plus or minus a few minutes. You know, I can't seem to like, you know, get that big jump, like improve by 15 minutes to get under that one hour. And that's fine, that's fine, I know where I'm at. I'm not getting any worse at least. I'm staying the same and I'm having fun. So what did I do with this 300 piece Ravensburger larger size jigsaw puzzle? First of all, this one's called Washi Wishes and it's by Lars Stewart. Again, another name that I recognize from other jigsaw puzzles. What I did was one night I said, I'm just gonna sit down and build this for fun. I'm not gonna try to speed run it. I'm just gonna take my time and see how long it took me. So the first night, it took me nearly 46 minutes, 45 minutes and 54 seconds. We'll say 46 minutes. The next night I came back and I said, okay, I'm gonna do it again. Not trying to rush, maybe try to go a little bit faster, but I just wanna see how much time I could improve having done the puzzle once. Well, I improved quite significantly by nine minutes because it took me 36 minutes and 55 seconds. So basically 37 minutes. So 49 minutes the first night, oh sorry, 46 minutes the first night, 37 minutes the second night, so nine minutes difference. I thought, okay, okay, we're doing good. So the third night I thought, that's it, I'm, I'm gonna try to, to go pretty fast. I, you know, I'm not yet in speed puzzling mode, but I wanna see if I go similarly as fast as I did the previous night, can I really improve upon that 37 minutes? And I did, I did a little bit faster, 32 minutes and a half, 32.27. So, you know, that's about, that's, a, you know, what was that? Five minute improvement about. So I'm like, okay, I'm getting there. So the fourth night I thought, can I really improve much more? 
I don't know. This is all trying to test whether the familiarity of the image makes a difference. So I thought, that's it. Completely go hard. Let's do it. Try to speed run this puzzle. How fast can you do it now after having done it three nights in a row? This is your fourth evening. How fast can you do it? And I managed to get in under 30 minutes. So my fastest time was 29 minutes, 11 seconds. So there you go. I thought that was quite interesting. The first evening, nearly 46 minutes. The last evening, 29 minutes, over four nights. Slowly kind of progressing how fast I did it and really trying to do it quite quickly that last evening. But I do think the familiarity of the image is what helped me improve more so. I just thought that was kind of interesting to do. Like how much can you improve on a jigsaw puzzle doing it, you know, night after night. Now it's been quite a while that I've done that. So I might pull it out again in a couple of weeks and try to do it and see where my time falls compared to those four times. But yeah, that's what I did there. I just had a little bit of fun with that jigsaw puzzle. So there you go. A couple of more speed runs under my belt, more practicing. I'll keep doing it. I'll keep getting there. And I can't wait to go to Worlds. It's going to be so much fun. I mean, I tell people, I know my times are not record breaking, but that's not why I'm going. I can't wait to meet everyone. And just the puzzling experience with other people who love puzzling. It's going to be so much fun and to meet everyone. So I have some news. Yes, if you've watched to the end, you get to hear this first. I will be going to the Australian Nationals in November. Yes, I've signed up. I'll give you more details on who I'm pairing with and who I'm teaming up with. But yeah, I'll be going. I believe it's in Sydney this year. It's like November 18th. So I'm so excited. And the Australian Jigsaw Puzzle Association is just amazing. If you're in Australia and you love puzzles, go sign up to be a member. I don't think their membership fees are that expensive for a year and you get so much in return. Like you have discount codes for various retailers and vendors. They do like giveaways spontaneously. They do various um, speed puzzling competitions at the different states and you get discounts on your entry tickets. I mean, Oh, I wish, I wish we had something like that here in New Zealand. I really do. I wish we had a nice Jigsaw Puzzle Association like they do in Australia. It's just amazing. I'll leave a link to their website down below. Go check them out. Sign up. Trust me, you won't be disappointed. And if you're there at the Nationals in November, make sure to come say hi. And of course, if you're going to be at Worlds in Spain, definitely make sure to come say hi. I might just be a little bit jet lagged, but that's okay. That's okay. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. For the love of puzzles, I hope you enjoy my videos. Please consider subscribing and until next time, ciao!